Hey folks, what's up? Welcome to this video about setting data with React Query. And in this video, we will learn how to make a post request for React Query, but it's essentially the same for, let's say, a put or a patch request, but like, let's say, anything other than a get request. And we'll also be learning about invalidating queries and updating them as well. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I recommend you to do so because we are actually going to use the uh, code that we ended up with in the last video. So this is uh, essentially our um, our pre or our current application. So we have a dashboard component, and in the dashboard component, we have two other components. We have the users component and the user component, and both make use of a um, React query hook, or at least a hook. Uh, that makes use of uh, of the uh, React Query hooks. So what we want to do now, we are going to focus on the create user component and the use create user hook. So let's first uh, make that component. So I will call it create user dot jsx create user Let's make sure if that is actually showing up. Um, let's put another horizontal line in here. You can actually move this and say create user. Create user like that. Let's take a look if that's showing up. There we go. Create user. So now let's make the um, the uh, the hook to actually fetch or make a post request, right? So right here, I will go to the, um, where is it? I can find it right now, the query hooks folder, and I will create a use create user dot JSX file. And well, this is pretty similar for the get request. So we want to make a, uh, a function that does the axios uh, call. So I will say const create user, which is going to take in a user object and it's going to do axios.post and then it's going to uh, fetch from HTTPS and then we have JSON placeholder dot typeycode dot com slash users. And then as a second arguments we're going to pass that user object and then we want to return the data from the response so i'll say response that data and now we can create the use create user function so let's say export default function use create user and this is going to take in that user object and then right here we want to um, actually use the query client and I'll show you in a minute why. So it's a const query client is use query client like that. And from this function, we want to return. And whereas in the previous video with, uh, with getting data, we were using the use query hook. We are for like post, put, and patch requests, we're going to use the use mutation hook, which of course also comes from React Query. And in here we will have an arrow function where it will pass that user object and actually um, call that create user function like that. And there we will pass that user object as well. And then as a second argument to, or actually, Let's first do this. So I will save it and I will go to the create user file. And now I can say const mutation, however you can call this, however you like, is use create user like that. And of course, like in a realistic scenario, we'll probably make, um, make a form with some input fields so that we can, uh, can set some, uh, some properties on that user object. But for now, let's create a button that will uh, 
actually send a user object straight away. So let's say we have a button in here with a type of button and it will say, for example, create user and that will do the following. So on click, we will have mutation dot mutate. And right here, we can then pass the object that um, our use create user is expecting. So I could say, for example, name is John Doe and age is 55. So now when I save it and I'll get back to my app and uh, as you can see, we have some failing network requests because the in the previous video, we created that user component, but by default, the uh, selected or actually that's defined in the dashboard component, the uh, selected user is set to null. So to prevent that error, I just will set it to one for now. So it will fetch a, a user by default. I can close that one up as well. Okay, so I will clear the network request. And now you'll see whenever I click on create user, it will now make a post request, which has succeeded. Right here, you can see our request payload. So we have our name, John Doe, with the age. And when I click on preview, you will see this is what the server actually responded with. So the name and the age property, including an ID. Now, what you very often want to do, um, like most of the time, actually, whenever you're making a mutation or you're using use mutation, whether it's like, you know, creating a new user or updating one, uh, you know, something like that, then you probably want to invalidate all the, um, essentially all your cache that uses the specific user key. So in this case, it would be our users uh, key that we uh, we used before. So in order to do that, what I can do is I can pass as a second argument to use mutation. And that's also why we are um, using the uh, query client, I can say on success. And then we can have an arrow function. And then I can say query client dot invalidate queries users. So what this will do, this will essentially uh, cause our cache to be cleared and to tell react query to fetch all the essentially um, hooks that are using that users uh, query key to be refetched again. And I can demonstrate you this because now when I refresh the app, and I click on create user, you will see that it makes a couple of, it makes actually two other requests. So we had our initial request, right? So this is our post request. And then it's refetching all the other, um, uh, well, essentially hooks we, uh, we, we used. So it's going to fetch the list of the users and it's going to fetch the individual user. So this is something you probably very often will do because as soon as you start changing something um, that is connected to a certain query key, you probably want to invalidate it. But of course, this is not always the case. But now let's imagine that instead of invalidating the queries, we want to um, actually update the users. So to demonstrate this, let's imagine that um, instead of having like create user, when we click on this button, we actually want to update a user. Let's say we want to update user 10. Okay. What I can do then is I could say, instead of invalidating the queries, I will um, take the data as we receive from the, uh, from the function uh, as a response or from the fetch as a response. And then Right here, I will say query client set query data. And then in here, I will also, oops, a typo. So right here, we will use that query key again. So we will have our users. And now we want to say that we want to change user 
with ID 10. So I will pass 10 in there. And then we want to replace that essentially with the data that was returned from the server. And now when I click on Clementina, so it will fetch the, uh, the details of Clementina and I will click on create user. We will get an error because it says cannot read property street of undefined, which is right because we uh, right here in the create user component, we did not set anything like that. So what we can do to um, prevent that error from happening is I will actually, uh, let's calm this out for now. So well, something like this, uh, that's not working of course, but then I will remove it completely. So now when I click on Clementina, it will, so now it will only fetch the names as you can see, but now when I click on create user, it will change the name in John Doe. But I think this is a, a good example where we probably in like a real world scenario would have wanted to invalidate the queries because even though it's updated in this component, you see that Clementina, um, the name of Clementina is still here in the users list. Um, whereas it's, uh, we actually changed it to John Doe. So that's why you always want to be, you know, that that's one of the things you have to think about with React Query. Like when do you want to invalidate your queries? And the answer most of the time is pretty often, right? So most of the time you just want to invalidate all the queries. Um, but of course you have to take a look, uh, um, for your use case, but do note that generally speaking, you can't go wrong with refetching other than of course, it would, uh, increase like the, the, the network usage of your uh, user, and you will get probably more responses on the server to handle. But on the other hand, you will make sure that your, uh, state, your server cache you're using on your client is always fresh. And I think that is, uh, that is a good thing to, uh, to strive for. So that was it pretty much for, um, uh, setting data with react query i hope you like this video and if you'd like to see more videos about react query because there are so much more you can do um with it then please let me know in the comments below and i'll take a look and uh, maybe we'll get some uh, some other videos about react query so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one